are the five symptoms of psychosis? First of all, we have delusions, which are false beliefs that the person clings to despite overwhelming evidence against them. Some delusions are non-bizarre. These sorts of delusions don't seem especially outlandish, they just seem false. For example, believing that my boss is spying on me, even though there is absolutely no evidence that she would do this, would be an example of non-bizarre delusion. In contrast, bizarre delusions are unrealistic and just plain odd. So believing that my boss spies on me by monitoring radio waves beamed through the fillings in my teeth would be an example of a bizarre delusion. In grandiose delusions, people view themselves as important or special in some way. Grandiose delusions can be bizarre or non-bizarre. The examples I gave of bizarre and non-bizarre delusions in which someone is spying on me are both grandiose because for my boss to want to spy on me, I'd have to be pretty important. The second symptom is hallucinations. Unlike delusions, which involve thinking, hallucinations involve perceiving. That is, hallucinations are sensory experiences the person has in the absence of sensory stimulation. So hearing voices or seeing things that aren't there would be examples of hallucinations. A third kind of symptom is disorganized thinking. Because we can't see people's thoughts, disorganized thinking has to be inferred from the form and content of people's speech. So disorganized thinking tends to involve things like loose associations in which a person jumps from topic to topic during conversation. They might respond tangentially, in other words, in ways that seem unrelated to what was being discussed. And in some cases, their language use seems incoherent, random, jumbled, just difficult to follow. This is a phenomenon that psychiatrists refer to as word salad. A fourth symptom of psychosis is abnormal motor behavior. While in some cases abnormal motor behavior involves physical agitation, aggression, or restlessness, in other cases it's characterized by decreased responsiveness to a person's surroundings. This is called catatonia. A catatonic individual displays reduced movement, they maintain a rigid posture, or they cease to respond verbally or physically to others. Finally, we have negative symptoms. So all the symptoms described so far are known as positive symptoms because they're all things that are added to the personality. Hallucinations and delusions weren't present before the onset of psychosis, but in many cases they are once psychosis begins. So they're considered positive symptoms because they're added on. By contrast, negative symptoms are subtracted from the personality. Avolition, flattened affect, alosia, anhedonia, and asociality are all negative symptoms. Avolition is a fancy way of saying the person exhibits decreased motivation. Flattened affect is when the person shows flat or reduced emotional expression. Alosia, also known as poverty of speech, involves reduced or impaired speech. Anhedonia is when the person fails to experience pleasure from previously enjoyed activities. And asociality is when the individual shows disinterest in social engagement with others. All of these symptoms involve a lessening or a decrease in the personality, which is why they're called negative symptoms. What psychotic disorders are included in the DSM-5? Well, schizophrenia is the most well-known and severe psychotic disorder in the DSM-5. To meet the criteria for schizophrenia, someone must exhibit two or more of the five major symptoms of psychosis for at least a month. And at least one of these symptoms has to be hallucinations, delusions, or disorganized speech. Signs of the disorder overall have to last for six months or longer, even when positive symptoms like hallucinations and delusions are only present for a month. And the age of onset, the time when the symptoms tend to develop most often, is between the teens and 20s. Delusional disorder is just what its name suggests. It's diagnosed when symptoms are limited to just delusions. The DSM-5 says that these delusions have to last one month or more. And also, delusional disorder can't be diagnosed if the person has ever received a diagnosis of schizophrenia. Brief psychotic disorder is diagnosed when psychotic symptoms only last a short time, from one day to less than a month. If after that time the person doesn't return to regular functioning, then a different psychotic disorder diagnosis is given. As with schizophrenia, onsets often in the teens or 20s, and at least one of the psychotic symptoms has to be delusions, hallucinations, or disorganized speech. Schizophrenic form disorder is similar to schizophrenia, except it doesn't last as long. The DSM-5 indicates that symptoms last at least a month, but less than six months. Again, as with schizophrenia and brief psychotic disorder, onset is typically in the teens or 20s, and at least one of the symptoms has to be delusions, hallucinations, or disorganized speech. 
People diagnosed with DSM-5 schizoaffective disorder show both psychotic and depressive symptoms. To receive this diagnosis, someone has to show two of the five symptoms of psychosis, with at least one of them being delusions, hallucinations, or disorganized speech. However, the person also has to experience a major mood episode, either a depressive or a manic episode. Finally, even though it is in the personality disorder section of the DSM-5, when discussing psychosis, we should probably briefly mention schizotypal personality disorder. People given this diagnosis show long-standing patterns of odd or eccentric speaking, perceiving, and behaving, but it doesn't rise to the level of any of the psychotic disorders we just mentioned. Schizotypal personality disorder isn't grouped then with the personality disorders because of its milder and more enduring nature. The DSM-5 psychotic disorder diagnoses do have their critics, and these critics tend to fall into two camps. Some critics argue that mental disorder categories aren't medically and scientifically established diseases, but are instead what they'd call social constructions, that is, socially shared ways of defining, talking about, and understanding behavior that we identify as quote-unquote abnormal. These critics contend that people who get diagnosed as psychotic really are behaving in ways that don't fit with social norms. However, these critics question whether the deviant behaviors these individuals show should be characterized as medical illnesses, at least without more firm evidence. Other critics say the DSM-5 psychotic disorder diagnoses aren't medical enough. They contend that the DSM-5 decides what to include or exclude based more on pragmatism, for example, what's best for clinicians, insurers, and drug companies, rather than what's scientific. Such critics want to see the DSM move away from making diagnoses based on behavioral symptoms, such as odd thinking or flat affect, and instead move towards making diagnoses based on biological measures. The difficulty, of course, is that at this point in time, we don't really have those biological measures. How do you feel about the DSM-5 approach to psychosis?